dog whistle. That's the term that a man that I admire shared with me in regards to the Russell Brand situation. A high-pitched noise that trains dogs and also a subtle political message aimed at a certain party. But what is the truth? He may be right. This could be just something that just gets us to act and think a certain way. But the biggest story right now in the emerging political news space is the scandal surrounding this man. And it couldn't have people more divided. He's winning because he is a man who generates his own content under his own speed, under his own expense. Yeah, he is a threat to all of these newspapers. What is it you clip, write for when you can? I love newspapers. Right. Don't get me wrong. I love this industry. So that's more what important I'm saying than is, these allegations why by now? these women. Why now? No, why it's, now? It's taken four why years. Now? It's taken he's, four he's, years for this. And that's all they've got. The apologetic begging for forgiveness text from Russell Brand. Could you please for a second stay open-minded to the possibility that the women are telling the truth? Well, this could be a distraction for sure. But there is more to this story than you're being told. It's spiritually significant. After all, I wouldn't have warned everybody that this was coming a year ago, if it weren't. Hello, my friends. Jacob's here one more time. Thank you for pressing in that play button. I don't know why I always do that so weird. Let me try it again. Thank you for coming by. Hey, everybody. I'm so happy to talk to you about Russell Brand today. I'm not really happy to talk to you about Russell Brand today. I've been talking to you about Russell Brand for a while. If you just say that you're a prophet or you have the answers, people will flock to you, just like they flock to Russell Brand, who's not sus at all. He just said that he's a prophet. The algorithm is not your friend. The algorithm wants you dumb, distracted, and tuned into mainstream media narratives. It doesn't want you watching a prophet in a fancy coat, which is what I am today. These are the heroes of today for a lot of people. You tell me in the comments section if you think they're the answer to getting out of the Matrix. To getting out of the Matrix. The Matrix is coming after Russell Brand. The Matrix is coming after Russell Brand. Anybody that challenges the globalists, anybody that challenges Big Pharma, anybody that's popular, that comes out against the establishment is gonna be accused. This isn't the usual type of video we make on this channel where we critique, attack, and undermine the news in all its corruption, because in this story, I am the news. I've received two extremely disturbing letters, or a letter and an email, one from a mainstream media TV company, one from a newspaper listing a litany of extremely egregious and aggressive attacks. There are some very serious allegations that I absolutely Refusions that I absolutely refuse. A man that um, you, you kind of want to hope that he's on the level, you know? And um, so when you, when these terrible allegations come out, which are terrible, I mean like, like criminal, it's not good, the stuff that they're saying about him. I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh, you know, but he's he's revealing the truth to everyone and he, he's, he's, they're taking him down. That's like the narrative, right? This is the narrative, which is interesting, because I did a video. Um, the same narrative we've seen we, with, with Andrew Tate, with the whole, the whole Matrix thing, right? He says, oh, the Matrix is after me. Yeah, so it's, um, the Matrix, I guess, is a, is a big problem, because even when, when Russell Brand's news came out, even Alex Jones was like the first thing he said is, I guess his wife put up a video of him in the airport. And he said, oh, this is, you know, the Matrix is against him and, and it's the Matrix, the Matrix, the Matrix. And I kind of put a little post up and I said, you know, when Alex starts talking about the Matrix coming after Russell Brand, I start thinking, hey, where's your NASA shirt? You know the NASA shirt? Yeah, that one, that one, the uh, NASA shirt. We, um, because of course, I, I, I'm suspect of a lot of these people. I hate that I say that because I also once rooted for these people. I, I, I once thought, well, you know, these are good dudes and they're really, they're trying, they're trying their hardest. I once believed that. 
But then little by little, you know what happens is a tree is known by its fruit. You start to see things and you start to have pause about certain things. Ironically, um, I've talked about the fact that maybe perhaps um, people like Alex Jones, people like Russell Brand and all of these people would be corrected, if you will. I had a vibe so bad about Mr. Jones that I even put a video out literally with the uh, with the thumbnail that um yeah I should just play the cl the clip the thumbnail looks like he's about to get censored from all the platforms it's like I have no way of knowing any of this stuff but I just kind of had a vibe you know I had a vibe and then all of a sudden it happened almost like it's being done on purpose like you know this poor guy right he he's uh they they really come against him he's not really hurting you know, and all these big lawsuits that are supposed... They're not getting any of these this money that's supposedly supposed to go out. I don't think he's hurting. I don't know. Take a look at this Alex clip before we get into Russell. So a while back, I started getting this vibe that we were going to see this sort of culture of, you know, canceling people out years ago. Okay? Like right before the first one went down, that first peg. Now, this is where it gets weird because um, I had forgotten. I had forgotten about this show. I forgot about the thumbnail that I made. I forgot about the timing of it because it was years ago. What was it, 2000, 2018? Take a look at this. Whose head is about to get snipped off from every single platform? That's weird. Then you got that 17th letter around them. Weirder still. The video, strange. Look at the uh, title felt like that was part of the plan. Using so-called fake news to keep us ignorant. Is it real news? Did they really get canceled? Or was this the thing that like catapulted these people into better and higher and greater directions? Now I know that he's going through, the guy in the picture right there, I know he's going through a really hard time in court and um, it's terrible. You know what else is terrible? What else is terrible is saying things that aren't real unless you know they aren't real. You know, things that are real, saying they aren't real, not a good thing unless you know they aren't real. And if you don't know, you know, just to get, not a good thing, not a good thing, a terrible thing in fact, to make it seem like these people are maybe in on it. I don't want to, I don't want to, but we do seem to go towards them, don't we? Like we do kind of take our direction from them. I'm not saying I do, but I'm saying a lot of people do. Not too long after the whole world knew that Jimmy Seville was a predator, a monster who preyed on children and women and young men and everything, uh, Russell Brand still offered his assistant naked to him. Said, hey, let me uh, send my assistant over for you. And, uh, you know, we'll make you happy because she does what I say. This is, um, this, these are our heroes. But Don't deal with me, fellas, but if you've got a sister, that's okay. I've got a personal assistant called and part of her job description is that anyone I demand she, um, greets, meets, massages, she has to do it. She's very attractive, Jimmy. Well, that's, that's, that's a good start. What you kind of start? You could send her along to do some research. Would you like her to wear anything in in particular to Jimmy? I'd actually prefer her to wear nothing. Right. So you want my assistant to meet you naked? Okay. Well, that's that's not going to be that's not going to be a problem. You know, I say things. I say things on the uh, show. Sometimes I get these vibes, and I put it out there. And um, sometimes I. Um, I could come on here and I say, oh, look at this, like with the Alex. They take a look at this. I told everybody, right? I told this was going to happen and it happened. And then people are like, oh, you know, you're, you're, you're doing a whole I told you so thing. It's not really that. It's just that, you know, I'm a speculator. I'm a writer. I look at the world the way it is. And I think to myself, you know, as if God is real, these things have to be corrected. And, what, you know, what better way to get people to believe in you than to have what they, they, they call controlled op opposition. I'm not saying that any of these people are controlled opposition, but that's a way to get people to believe a narrative and to buy into a narrative. And it's funny that this whole, this, this whole, supposedly this group of individuals like Mr. Jones, like Russell Brand, like Andrew Tate, all of these people, 
you know, and I've talked about, I talked about Tate too. Ironically, here's the thing, you wanna hear ironic, because of course, on this uh, on this channel, if you come to Jacobs, well, it's not really ironic, it's more like it's bound to happen. I did a video um, exactly one year and 17 days before the Russell Brand thing broke. Literally, this video right here, and you can see on the thumbnail, you see Russell Brand in the front right there. Then behind him, you got Andrew, you got Andrew Tate in the background, and you got Alex Jones, and you got Joe Rogan. And it's like the question was, who do we trust? Who do we trust? And I warned everybody, and I said that, you know, if they be corrupt, which is a hashtag I kind of came up with, I should probably put it on a shirt. But I said, you know, if they be corrupt, God's going to reveal it. Going to re reveal the corruption when it comes. I'm not saying that that's what's happening right now with Russell Brown and everything else, because like I said, I was a fan of him. I don't know if you know how he got his start. You know, he was a comedian in England and everything else. He was like the uh, the, 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 the top guy on uh, this uh, Big Brother spinoff. Big Brother spinoff. Take a look at that right there, right, with the all-seeing eye in the background. Is that kind of like a, does that kind of like make you think maybe he's, you know, initiated or something? And ironically, the I believe it's the same channel, Channel 4, that's where he kind of you know, kind of took took off to begin with until he, uh, you know, he went to one thing, then another thing, then the next thing he goes in, in, in tons of movies and everything else, and he's he's like the top guy in MTV until, of course, after 9-11, and he came to work dressed like um, Os Osama bin Laden, which they, people didn't, had a big problem with that, and um, other people are like, oh, he was trying to reveal the truth. Who do we believe? Who do we trust? This was something that I talked about in a show that I did. One year, 17 days ago. Which, of course, now I'm gonna I'm gonna play some of it, which is a great show because I'm gonna get into the red-haired brand. Russell's name means red-haired. Red-haired is uh, ruddy all over. It's a symbol. We've talked about it a lot on the show. It's very interesting. But the last name is Brand, so it's kind of like it's Edom's brand if you want to look at it spiritually speaking. I gotta tell you, I'm drinking wormwood tea. Like this is legit wormwood tea too. Like from a guy who actually like cultivates and like grabs the herbs and all this stuff. And it was like, it's a very cool shop down port. My wife and I went in there and and um, it, it tastes a lot better. I gotta tell you something, but I, I'm getting a headache. As I'm talking here, I'm getting a headache. It's, um, it, you notice I haven't really squinted my face as much because I know that it's, um, because it's it's not great, but it's it's not anywhere near as bad as the uh, the stuff that I tried on the other show, <laughs> on the other shows. It's interesting. It feels like wormwood is what God says He's going to pour out on the people to drink, because of the way the world is today. Maybe it was like a clue that we should be doing that because of parasites and everything else. I don't know. I'm not saying to go off and get wormwood tea, but I am saying that it's very symbolic. It's very symbolic of you got sometimes you got to pay the piper. You know, and now, now Russell. Here's the thing. Back when the uh, virus of the crown came out, he like uh, we like so many of us wanted to share the truth, and I had to do it in like veiled ways. I would do skits, and I would do other things, and I would I would get the truth out, and I wouldn't hold back, but I'd say it and I'd share it in a way that was true and honest to me. You know, because I couldn't make claims that I didn't know, but I could put out what I you know thought possibly could be. Shows like mine were, you know, very, and probably still are, they, they were uh, stifled, they were held back. Meanwhile, here comes Russell Brand, and he comes on, and he starts, st st you know, t saying all the stuff that we've been saying, saying all the stuff, and I was like so excited, I'm like, yeah, this is very brave of you, and I was like, I was like a fan. I was like, finally, someone speaking, speaking out, because I believe that God can take anybody, even somebody who may be, you know, with the tattoos, the 33, may be initiated and everything else, maybe you've done horrible things in his past, but then can use them. I don't know. I just was, I was just happy to see that finally it was getting some, some airtime. But then you start to think, as I did <laughs> begin to think, it's like, isn't that kind of part of the plan? Wouldn't it, you know, wouldn't it be, we, we'd put the people out there that they want you and then they can control you. And, and if you're not like the best upright person and you have a pretty checkered past, you're very easy to control, right? Because they say things like, hey, we know this about you and we know that about you. You better, you better do this and you better do this. And uh, they can get people riled up to believe a lot of stuff and to say stuff that they call these little honeypots where you go after it, you say it, and the next thing you know, you're shut down. So I've always warned everybody not to just trust people, you know. So here we have somebody who his allegations are horrible, horrible. 
and they begin from like 2006, I think, to 2013. So this is going back a while. Here's the thing, right? Like in his video, uh, the, the very video when he says, oh, they're going to come after me. And, you know, this is because I'm fighting the truth and, and they're going to say things that are not true. And I mean, you know, a 30 year old in a relationship with a 16 year old, that's that's sus. There's like something wrong there. Right. I mean, that's like. And this is something that I believe that he's he, he admitted to. He's just saying he was it was consensual for like a 30-year-old man to be with a 16-year-old. You know other who, who else say stuff like this? The Andrew Tates of the world. It's horrible. It's scary in a whole systems like that. And that's why I've been saying for a long time, if they be corrupt, they're gonna be revealed. So is it any wonder that I do a show like one year and 17 days exactly from when all this news breaks? I think it's pretty interesting, especially since the rumors started probably one year and eleven days, which I've been talking about the one 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 it's almost like here we go one thing after another thing after another thing they just keep lining up so he does this video and he's got this uh, thing in the background he's got a bookshelf and on the bookshelf he's got manly p hall <laughs> okay i don't know this book right here this is like you know this is like the the illuminati bible some people say i mean i don't know i don't say that i don't i've never read the book you, you know I, i'm yeah, I, I shouldn't be judging but it's like kind of like this is like He's, I've con had problems with him. I've done videos where I said, look, this guy's saying that we could all be God because he has, as I started watching the show a little more, I started paying a little more attention. And uh, it became very clear to me, at least that perhaps he didn't leave the, you know, the uh, the old days and the bad stuff away. Even his, his uh, wife, Katy Perry, said that she's got the truth locked in a safe about him. That was a weird thing for someone to say that was married to uh, Russell Brand. It's a very strange thing to say. Once again, I don't know the man's heart. I know right now they're sharing, sharing a lot of pictures of him with his new wife and everything else, and he got sober and he got clean and he you know, he had an addiction and people, they changed their lives and they turned their lives around. But then he became like a guru and it became very clear to me. I felt that he was very much like narcissists. You know, he was was um, a little, which, you know, the donut just did a whole show about him and, you know, said that he's got these like psycho eyes. You know, these psych psychopath eyes, psychopath eyes, people that just don't care about other people. They're not empathetic to other people because they believe that they're God. And uh, isn't that to him something that he said? The things that I want to say about this Russell Brand in plain sight, Channel 4 Dispatches documentary, the first is if you don't think that Russell Brand has been waiting for this day to arrive, of course he's known since Me Too started, that there are women out there who have stuff on him and that it's only a matter of time before they come forward and expose him for what he is. He has known that this day was coming and so he's had the incentive over the last few years to cultivate a following of people who distrust the media, who think that the media are out to get Russell Brand and that they'll do anything that they can to do that. And that's what he's been doing since Me Too started. I mean, I gotta be honest, you know, it's like I really want to share the truth, I really want to do the right thing, I really want to say the right thing. I don't want to condemn a man if the man is wrong, but I talked about this. I talked about this and I go into a lot of detail about Russell. And I think after you listen to, uh, after you listen to this, it'll be pretty clear that the red-haired brand is probably, you know, not the brand you want to be buying into today. People like Russell Brand, yeah, he knows things. He's a guru, right? And once again, I like Russell Brand. I think he's a genius comic. I really do. I really liked one of his specials. I mean, I just thought it was so insightful. And I even, I don't watch his show anymore. I got bored of it. Um, but I did for a while. I, I enjoyed his show and I was like, wow, he's really pushing the envelope. Wow, you're doing great work. And, uh, and I was like enamored by it. I'm like, well, look at, well, he has all the money. So I guess he's, he's taking a chance, but his channel continued to grow and grow and grow and grow. He's got almost 6 million subs. And of course they put it out like, oh yeah, he's rebranding himself as a uh, clickbait, right? Clickbait theorist. That's who he is now. Yet he's doing really well. You know what Russell means? This is interesting. It means red-haired. If you know anything about red-haired, it's the red-haired brand. If you know anything about red, ruddy, Adam, the first man, it's a symbol of carnal man. It's the carnal man's brand. Red-haired 
Brand. Russell Brand. Now, I know that that's like a little bit of a stretch. Seems. Seems. You know Esau, Jacob's brother, the firstborn? He came out hairy all over. He was red. Jacob, on the other hand, smooth. Remember we've talked about hair on the show? Remember the whole thing with the uh, slap? It's the harvest is coming. The harvest, summer of soul. The harvest, the trident, the trishula, where a great judgment comes. Something big is coming. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. The red-haired brand. The carnal man's brand. And very, very, uh, very well-liked. He was just recently on uh, Andrew Schultz's. You know Andrew Schultz. He's another one. Great comedian. Really pushes the envelope. Sexually fluid. <laughs> I guess. It's uh, really interesting. There you got the uh, the third eye. That was from what? Uh, yesterday. I went, um, I saw that Russell Brand was, because I had a whole show about Russell Brand. Big one. Because he's good friends with Yovel uh, Noah Harari. A guy who recently was like, you know, Schwab's from the uh, forum. He uh, is like, it was like, it was one of the top guys over there and an advisor over there. And he, he, uh, he's, you, you, he basically, there is no God. We're God. We become God. This is Russell's. Russell's did many shows with him, you know, kissing him, holding his book. Recently, this guy, Harari, sounds like Ferrari. Harari uh, was saying, we don't need humans. Robots, there's no reason for humans to be around. Robots gonna be able to do anything, right? Now, we, of course, we got, you know, we got Optimus Prime. We got the that robot. It's gonna be in all the houses. It's gonna be like replace everybody's car. Supposedly, it's gonna be as essential to the car. You know, we, what do we need people people for anymore? What do what do we need that for? We we don't need any of that. Russell Brand, the red haired Brand, you know. Follow me. I know all the ways of the world. I'm the guru, right? You know, I look at I look at how he comes on sometimes too. With he has his shirt off all the time. He's always got his shirt off. Sometimes he doesn't even wear a shirt. Sometimes he puts a towel over his head. And I like it. You know, I think it's it's interesting how he does these things. I wouldn't mind doing it, you know, except for the fact that I feel like I'd look silly. But I guess when you're a celebrity, you're supposed to, you know, push the envelope and look goofy. I don't know. Maybe he just likes being free, you know? Why do we have to have these, these, uh, these norms of how we should dress, right? Well, <laughs> Russell, he promotes that we're God. That's his thing. Yeah, did you know that? Everybody who, who, um, who, who he, yeah, we're God. We are. That's what, that's what, that's what Russell says. I don't believe that without a child. Not at all. Jesus didn't. He said it very clearly. I'm, I'm the child of God. You're, you're, I, I, I never said that I was. I'm the child of God and you want, I'm a child of God. You're a child of God. I'm not God. The red haired brand, the Esau's of the world, the Adam's of the world, the Cain's of the world, they decided to be like God taking things into their own hand, not submitting to that second nature, that higher nature, which is Christ, the truth, the, the last man from heaven above, instead of the one that's formed in the dust of the earth. We've been formed in the dust of the earth. You, th you think that I'm God? I don't think I'm God. Russell says we are, that we create everything. So he was on Schultz's show. Let me just, pl I'm going to play a clip of this. In Make Islam, in Christianity, thing. in yes. Buddhism, they tell yes. you this. It's an illusion, but you have to participate as if it is real. Yes. You have to find the beauty in it. You are creating reality while you are living it. You are God. You are God. The, the, the Father and I are one. Now that's a problem. That's a big problem. And he's using scripture. I and the Father are one. Guess what? All of us and the Father are one. It doesn't make us the Father. Right? <laughs> Everything exists in God. God exists in everything. All there is is God. No man has known the Father, but the Son reveals the Father. We reveal God to the world. That's our job. But he promotes it. And he's got, what, six million, almost six million subscribers. And then you look at all the stuff that he talks about, right? He's exposing it all. Is he, though? Isn't this stuff that we already know? Isn't this stuff that probably his team watched in somebody else's video? 
and then he's promoted in the algorithm? I'm not saying that that's the case. I'm not saying that's the case at all. I'm saying there, look into that bird, by the way. <laughs> look into that bird. You know, he's got some interesting tattoos. He's got some interesting things. And he's been connected to some very interesting people. But does that make him, is he really, did he have an awakening? He says he did. Does he have our best interests in mind? He says he does. But we're not God. And that's a problem because your God, your ego, your carnal mind, the red-haired brand, that's the brand that the ego wants. Give me more of that. I'm God. I can do whatever I want. I can create whatever I want. There's a problem with that. Because if you're God, your ego is God. Not that God, you exist in God. Because there's one God, one baptism, one, one Lord, one spirit that's in all and through all. But you're not that. You are a creation of that. Jesus said, and this is a great way to understand what Jesus taught. Because he understood it. I understand it. You'll understand it after I explain it to you. He says, I'm in the Father, and the Father is in me. We're in God, and God is in us. He didn't say, I am God. Religion teaches that. That's a whole other lesson for a whole other day. Whole other lesson for a whole other day. Russell Brand teaches that, that you are God. That's a problem. Because a majority of the scripture says very, very, very clearly that you should never compare God to the image of a corruptible man. God is not a man that he should lie, nor is he the son of man that he should repent. That's in the book of Numbers. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm going to show you. Let me show you. Let me show you. Because that's the Antichrist spirit speaking. And that's a problem. Okay? Let me just pull this up. Let's go over here. This is the Antichrist spirit. This is the red-haired brand. We, this is in 2 Thessalonians. By the coming, that word coming means the revealing or manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto him because we're the body. We gather together to that spirit that's within us. That you're not soon shaken in your mind or troubled by the spirit, nor by the word, nor by the letter of any of us. Don't be stressed out by what's going on in the world today, everybody. This is a now message for you, so listen. Don't let anybody deceive you. I don't care how entertaining and how, oh, well, look at them exposing it all. For that day won't come except there be a falling away. Guess what? Guess what, people? Let me just come on over here. Let me tell you something. Newsflash. The falling away has happened. It's happened. The Antichrist has been revealed to a lot of people, but not everybody. And sure. There will be a literal character that'll stand up that'll be monstrous. And you'll be able to once again be tricked by that antichrist spirit that's in the temple of God, declaring himself to be God. I am God. You are God. We are all God creating. That is the Tao, he says. It's not the Tao. We're not the Tao. The Tao, which is the path. It's, we're not that. I study all these other books too, you know, so that we can all talk. We can all come together and we can, we can understand these things. Too much. There's too much going on today. And it's too, too scary to think that this many people are listening and they think that these people are all on our side. It's no consequences, right? Wrong. We reap what we sow. Let no man deceive you, for that day will not come except there be a falling away. That happened. Good. And that man of sin, who's the man of sin? That's the Antichrist. Be revealed. The man of sin is revealed is known as the son of perdition. Do you know who the son of perdition is? Woe to you, teachers of the law and the Pharisees, you hypocrites. You travel the land overseas to win one single convert. And when you succeed him, you make him twice as much the child of hell as you. Child of hell, son of perdition, son of perdition, child of hell, same exact thing. So... The one that opposes and exalts himself, okay, is a child of hell. The man of sin. Don't let anybody deceive you. The day of Christ's coming 
Notice it doesn't say return. Coming to be revealed. Manifested again. To be made aware. That day will not come unless there's a falling away first. And that you know that you're not God and you stop thinking that you know it all. That you know that you're the idea of who you think you are is not the truth of who Christ is in you. It's an antichrist. This is who opposes and exalts himself above everything that is called God. Guess what? Russell, when he's saying I'm God, he's exalting himself above everything that's called God or that is worshiped. So that Russell Brand, the red-haired Brand, is God sitting in the temple of God. Guess who the temple of God is? We are. Showing himself that he is God. So much so that on a broadcast with a bunch of people and on his, you know, show on a regular basis, he's telling everybody, you are God, you are God, you are God, you are God. This is the spirit of Antichrist that needs to be revealed. This is the falling away. Remember not when I was with you, I told you these things. And now you know what's withholding Christ. That he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity is already at work, people. But here's the good thing, right? And then shall the wicked be revealed, as I'm revealing right now. And then shall the wicked be revealed. And then shall the wicked be revealed. Like man worshiping the idea of man. That's what it's about. And if you read it, you, you find that out pretty quickly. It's very easy if you actually read it and you look at what's being said here, okay? God's wrath against sinful humanity. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven, heaven is within you, against all ungodliness, okay? Since what may be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. Since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, he's invisible, can't see him. His eternal power and divine nature is clearly seen being understood by what's been made. So people are without excuse. Can't see God, but you can see what God makes. For although they knew God by everything around them, they didn't glorify him as God, nor gave him thanks. Everybody thinks they're in charge of their lives, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. Now watch what they did because they say they're so smart and they dress so cool and they wear really cool stuff. And they exchanged the glory of the immortal, invisible, in another translation, God, for the images made like a human being. That's the problem. That's the reprobate mind. So that was from like, almost like exactly a year ago today. It is what it is, you know. So that's the show. What do we do? What do we do? We stop making people heroes and we start turning to God. You know, we start to uh, we start to put our faith in more. And listen, I got to tell you something. There's some changes. There's some changes I want to get into about the uh, the novel, the Calling. By the way, the uh, I think the best novel ever written. I mean, that's just my opinion because I wrote it. And I really, there's so much, there's so many layers to this story. And you should get a copy and you should read it. Turn your phone off. Get into the story because it, it is about you. It's no wonder that I wrote it. What, it was first published 2008, and I got 2022 in here. This is the time that we're in right now. But uh, some changes, because, you know, when you deal with big things, you know, there's some issues. You'd be surprised. I don't want to, I'm not going to say some um, bad things, but the system is really corrupt. And uh, so from now on, uh, just so you know, I don't think, I don't think you're going to be able to return the books unless maybe they're broken or something else. I think there's no more returns. <laughs> You'd be surprised if I could tell you the story. But there's like this big thing going on right now, and it really is not, it's not great. And it's a way for, you know, big corporate monsters to do some terrible things. to terrible things to take the, the scraps that you're supposed to, right? So uh, there's one place to get it because they, uh, they do it there. Amazon, go get it at Amazon right now. There's like a thousand reviews. You're going to love the story. It's amazing. And just so you know, after you read it, you can't return it. You can give it to a friend if you want. You know, I'd say keep it because this thing, one day, this is going to be, it's going to be worth something. If, if it's not worth something financially, it's definitely going to be worth something spiritually. All right.
I love each and every one of you. Have the best day ever. If you want to get yourself some of the merch, you know everything's in the link of the description below. You want to get rid of toxins and everything else. You want to put on skincare that doesn't contain a bunch of sludge from the chemical factories or toxic factories, go to trulyfreehome.com. That's my sponsor. And I just did a skit. I just did a little goofy Vlad skit. And uh, if you haven't seen it, you really should check it out. It's very funny. And I do these because um, I, I like to make people laugh. I like to make people laugh. I like to make my family laugh. I, I like to be a meatball. I like to just, and, and it, it scratch that creative itch. And uh, I hoped to also branch out, maybe reach new viewers. And I so let me know if you you enjoy it. Um, if you want, at the end of this video, you'll be able to click it at the end of the uh, trailer for my novel. All right, I love each and every one of you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. September tenth. Mars hangs closer to the Earth than it has in 6,000 years. Like the light that led men from the east to a child in a manger, it could well be a sign of good things to come. Thomas James shall be his name. The world will change because of him. In the small town of Bethel, in a time not unlike our own, a child with a great purpose is born. Years later, alienated by his peers and abused, Thomas suffers a devastating loss. When it appears he has nothing left to live for in the world, this is when his true calling begins. While trying to escape the sinister powers that be, a terrifying vision haunts him. Miraculous events seem to follow the peculiar young man as he struggles to come to terms with what he was born to do. The stage is set. The time is at hand. The truth will rise and a revolution will begin. The startling revelation of who Thomas James is, truly, will change the lives of those around him and set off a chain of events long ago foretold. There is more to this novel than one might think. Inside these pages hides a treasure just waiting to be discovered. So if you've ever wondered if there's more to life, or why it is we suffer, then this story will not only captivate you, it may just open your eyes to a truth that could set you free. Find out what is in us all that makes us heed the calling.